In English, the United States of America. Arish. 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 Where are you off to, Dimsey? It might take me on into songs. Come here. That's them songs as a kid you storm there. You know? Will any Luke Driscoll want to have a job for me? There's people in New York who'll pay your fare over. Care to take a look at her.
take it easy, woman. Listen, will you go on for God's sake? But years and anyway. No, look what you've done. No, I, I was looking through the window once, and I seen Mr. O'Brien and the wife of Daddy was. He was pulling at her corset strings. Oh, listen, what do you think you're doing at all? Never said that I shouldn't have. Hi. There's an open the oven for your mother, John Joe. Oh, you'll get your death of cold standing there in that draft. Say a prayer, he'll give you the job. I'll do my best for him. What would you like for your tea and your birthday? Fried bread and a rasher and egg. Oh, God, I think I've no rashers. Will you run down to Kyo's and Mr. Driscoll's finish with you? Take money from the drawer. God he'll take you in and come to your father. you. Lost. All right, love, my sweetheart. There's a train going for Paris at 8 o'clock. We'll be on it together.
Who's there? John Joe Dempsey. I'm here for rashers, Mr. Lynch. I'm 15 today, Mr. Lynch. 15? Step in thereby and get yourself a bottle uh, of stove. My mother wants the rashers straight away, Mr. Lynch. Mrs. Kuo has gone out to confession. Mr. Lynch is in charge until her ladyship returns. Go in there and get yourself a bottle. to an age where you have to be advised. Is that the first bottle of stout you ever had? It is, Mr. Lynch. A bottle of stout is an acquired taste. You'd want to take a dozen of them or more, maybe, before you get the urge. Now, with the other matter, it's different. What other matter, Mr. Lynch? We'll talk about it presently. I suppose you'll be going out looking for work soon. Mr. Driscoll's asked to give me a job at the Salmis. Well, isn't that grand? You'll be one of ourselves, so... Oh, there's a great future for you in the sawmills. Here, have a wood boy. I know I can. You're 15 years of age. Have a fag. I saw you with Quigley. I often see that. Now, if your father was alive, he'd be telling you to keep away from that fella. But Quigley's away in the head. How you'd feel sorry for the poor creature, Mr. Lynch. I had it in mind to talk to you about another matter. Oh, Lord, please, God. I had it in mind to talk to you about the Piccadilly Glory Girls. Glory Girls, Mr. Lynch? When the war broke out, I joined the British Army. Now, this is a private matter between you and me. You understand that? I do, Mr. Lynch. It was uh, a fellow called Baker used to call him that used to talk about nothing else, only the Piccadilly Glory Girls. He had the soldiers all worked up with his talk of them taking off their togs. He used to describe the motions of their haunches. You'll have another stop of that, Zora. Thanks, Mr. Lynch. Did, uh, did one of the Glory Girls entice yourself, Mr. Lynch? What I'm telling you is a moral story. The facts of life is one thing, John Joe, but keep away from dirty women. Well, when the time came, Baker led us all into Piccadilly. He told us it was the eye of the empire. And there they were, the glory girls, all lined up in the doorways of the shops, showing off the stature of their legs. And some of them had their bosoms cocked off the way they might maybe strike a passing soldier and entice him away from his companions. Well, Baker went up to the third glory girl he saw. And he said, could he make an arrangement with her for the six of us? Six of us, including myself, God forgive me. Of course, we were in an intoxicated condition. I mean, I would never have agreed to an arrangement like that only for the drink. I was a virgin boy like yourself, John Joe. Be dead, you fine men, says she. And we had bottles of beer in our pockets. We'll drink that first, says she, before we get down to business. <laughs> oh, you have the wrong end of the stick. 
what happened to me as I walked along that street was that I had a vision of the Blessed Virgin. There was a statue of the Holy Mother in my bedroom at home, a special little one that my mother bought me for the occasion of my first Holy Communion. As soon as she said that we drink the beer before we got on to business, I saw the statue of the Holy Mother as clear as if it was there in front of me. When I got home, my mother asked me, was I all right? She said, I had a bad dream about you. I dreamt that your legs were on fire. <coughs> she wanted to see me legs. To tell you the truth, she made me slip down my breeches. There's no harm done, says she. It was only afterwards I worked it out. What my mother dreamt was that I was being licked by the flames of hell. Well, it's the usual thing, Father. I'm not permitted to interfere with the celluloid in fact. Take out a reel or two, well then, sure, everyone will be confused. Well, we'll give it half a blessing, so, Mr. Daly. Oh, and if you'd a mind to, you might take up a little collection inside some time for the new roof over. You won't have to ask twice, Father. Didn't the brothers ever remark that an elderly lunatic is not a suitable companion for a young fella? Brother Lee mentioned it a few times. When the day will come that you want to find a girl to marry her, she might hesitate if you had an association with Quigley. Do you understand me, John I do. Come on yourself. I think we'll chance another bottle. Is it going down all right? It's going down great. It's, a, it's just that my mother will be waiting for the rashers. No rasher can be caught until Mrs. Cure returns. Is your mother fit? She's all right. You only have the one mother, Zanzo. Don't ever forget that. What's that fella doing with a bottle of stout? We had a man-to-man -man talk. Are you mad? He's underage. No, I came for rashers, Mrs. Kill. A half pound of green. The middle cut. <laughs> You're a shocking man. <laughs> Will you pour me a bottle there, Mr. Lynch? Will I attend to this lad? Finish that up now there, Mr. Dempsey. <laughs> A little along the lonely, a little along the lonely side, and I'm thinking about you only, wishing you were by my side. Come on back in here to the cellar and help me with the valve. I lost these days since Mr. Cure passed on. Hot work. Oh, you'll boil with the heat. Why don't you take off that jumper? Haven't you got the lovely arms? You will lie down here for a rest. You feel all right after the stout. And oh, now, listen, don't go tell him that you had cigarettes and stout. Here, I'll, I'll tell you what you'll do. Chewing a bit of parsley. Parsley? Isn't there a little bit of parsley in the garden at home? There's nothing in the garden, only rhubarb. Huh. I'll give you a few tea leaves then. There's nothing like tea leaves or parsley to take away the smell of the stout. No.
of games we used to play with other children while at school to pass the time away. But oh, how often have I longed for those bright days again when little Rosie Nell and I went swinging in the lane. Oh, I would give the world to be with Rosie Nell again. I never How are you done, Joe? How is quickly these days? Now all young men with tender hearts... How are you done, Joe? Did you get the job? There it is. Hey, you got tea in your teeth. Have a great one for you tonight. You coming in? I've got to bring the rashes home to me, Laura. Well, aren't you the decent man, John Joe? John, 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 wait until you. I was looking through the window five minutes ago and clear to God, I seen a great thing. I seen Mrs. Barry bait the husband with a long strip of wire on account he wouldn't oblige her with his attentions. Ah. Uh, three bottles of stout with Mr. Lynch. Hey, uh, did, did, he, did he tell you about the glory, girls, did he? He did. Uh, I'm a decent man. Hey, I, gotta, I gotta get home with the rashes. Hey, John, Joe, John, Joe, did I tell you about seeing the solicitor, Mr. Feely? Once in bed with the wife, I was up in the, the roof of the house he has. You huh? told me quickly. And you know, Dwyer's where your mother was the cane. And, you know, I, I seen Mrs. Dwyer one time, and there she was, powdering her salt. You told me that Did I tell you that one today? Did I, I, Mr. Dwyer must have been out at the council meeting. Hey, John, 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 are you, are you, are you, did you get the job, did you? I did. John Joe, will I? Will I go and have a supper of tea with you, will I? I thought you could knock down. This is cured, is that confession? Your teeth. What? Got dirt on your teeth. Yeah. Will, will I make the tea? I was talking to Mr. Lynch. Is his mother well? He said she was. He broke her heart when he went to join in the war. She thought 
thought he'd never come back. Oh, he came back all right. Pour out the tea, John Joe. Will we go to the pictures on your birthday? We'll leave the cake when we come in. Do you like that pet? I would, all right. And get yourself a bar of crunchy. Come on now, pet. Oh, Isn't he the man already? <laughs> he has a great way with him. He's very quiet, officer. Ah, he had an exchange of views with Mr. Lynch, and do you know they got on really? grand together? <laughs> oh, Mr. Lynch puts all the boys on the straight oh, pathway. <laughs> Over there. No better man than Mr. Lynch for that. <laughs> oh, you could see. I, I, are you going to the pig street, are you? Yeah, my mother sent me for Roberta. Why? Oh, yeah. Here, John Joe, would be... Uh, any chance would they, would, they, would they let me in, do you think, huh? She had no, could you? Probably, you know, I... One of four. It's a uh, one of four, but... It's a one of four. One of four. Thank you, Mother. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank He was going to the pictures tonight. Mr. Lynch never goes to the pictures. Was that so? I didn't know that. Pictures might indeed. Oh, it's nice you're out enjoying yourself, Mrs. Dempsey. <laughs> I hear it's a lovely film. Oh, is it? Oh, that's grand. You made a great job at the scullery. Neat as a pin it is. I did the best I could with it. Oh, you did, yes. <laughs> your mother was telling me that you're leaving the brothers, John Joe. He's going into Driscoll's. Is he now? Aren't you lucky now to get work in the town? Oh, he is, he is. Not having to be going away to England or America. There's too many that leaves these days. Oh, indeed, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, quickly, go to the picture. Well, no. <laughs> right, what do you have on you this time? Huh? Uh, I don't know. Oh, through with you. Behave yourself. Yes, <laughs> man. Right, come on. Anyway, anyway. Hey, 
Will you forgive me? Oh, no, I can't, dear. Good evening, Carl. How delightful to see you again in Moscow. You can't refuse me this bulky, can you? My dear Kozinski, you know very well I never dance unless I can help it. You can't today, your... Ah, I see it. Merci, 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 merci. Had signed your card for the mazurka. Gregory will take you. Don't catch cold and go straight to bed. Hoping she'd send you over, Father. I have them out here in the bedroom. 
Not your waiting. I'll show you the stories that would interest her. You do not take off your jersey. The will evening is so hot. <laughs> Torn in my leg, John Joe. There in my leg, John Joe. Do you think you might be able to get it? We'll be going to the chip shop. Go away quickly. Go home now. I'll go on. You know, there used to be a one living in the town one time, Mrs. Dempsey. Like, like the one in the pictures up at the start house. Did you know that one, Mrs. Dempsey? I did not. Hey, John Joe. John Joe. Hey, you're not going to America, are you? America? Why did we go to America? Ah, sure, well, would you? Didn't, they? Hey, didn't the brothers do a great job on John Joe, didn't they? Huh? Hey, and Mrs. Dempsey, you know, she, she had the high heels and the, and the nails all... Yes, so you can see them in the distance. Uh, did, you, did you ever go and that yourself, Mr. Dick? Will you leave us alone quickly? Uh, uh, they, are they taking a the collection for Father Dee? I said Father Dee's. Poor Father Dee's. We should be in the shirt. And they did fail. Get off your bed quickly! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good night, Mrs. Dempsey. That is a decent man, huh? The decentest man that was ever born in this town. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's all nice about him going off to the war to get away from his, his poor old mammy. Uh, and he's made a good husband for a widow woman sometimes. Was they just saying that, Dan, Dan Joe, wasn't they? Huh? You don't go away. I'll get the guards to you quickly. Go on, get off with you. Well, I'm not going to have a supper tea with you. My mother said to go away quickly. Ah, uh, uh, listen, I'll look, look, John, John, John. Get off to your bed like you're told. Uh, I did. mean by going to America? I know what he meant. You're lucky you don't have to leave the town. Oh, I know I am. That mini bolter is an eye for you. I wouldn't give you tuppence for her. Oh, 
I know you'd have been good if you'd had to go away. I know you'd have sent me money over whenever you could. But I'm easier in my mind with you in the sawmills. I have a little surprise for you. I thought for your 15th birthday. your father's one time. It hasn't had ink in it for 13 years. It's nice, all right. Is the cake a bit stale, do you think? No, I wouldn't say it's stale. Maybe the turf does get into it. It has a funny taste. I know, I know. Do you think you'll have a use for the pen at the sawmills? Did he mention the type of work? Just helping at the saws. I must take care of the saws. John Joe promised me that now. America's not all beer and chocolate, you know. The pictures is one thing, John Joe, but there's many a lad drinks himself into the grave with homesickness. Did Mr. Lynch mention Quigley to you? He did. I want you to promise me a thing, John Joe, now that you're 15. Ah, Quigley's harmless. Asking you now as much for your father's sake as anything. You can ask Quigley to go away and he'll be off like a dog. That's what I'm saying to you. I don't know why you did you ever hung around with him. Brother Lee used to ask me that. He made me sit down one time and think about it until I could give him an answer. I gave him an answer in the end. I said, it's like being alone when you're with Quigley. Brother Lee hit me in the side of the face. But what Please God, you look back for a long time to your 15th birthday. Didn't we make a grand evening of it? We did. Your father will be proud of you tonight, John Joe. I don't remember him at all. Yeah, sure, how could you? I go to bed so. Don't be long behind me. No, I'll, I'll just read the paper for a minute. Have a good sleep now, pet. I'll have a good sleep.
Shoes. Hmm? Yeah, want a bar and umbrella? Uh, hmm? No, thanks. Oh, hey, hey, I know what you want. Pocket hand warmer. <laughs> Actually, we're searching for the golden fountain head. <laughs> kind of heart, please. My usual, please, Nog. Yeah, I could do you a part share on a holiday cave in Stonehenge. No, thank you. Oh, how about a nice watch then, eh? You go then. He had to fly. Hey, I think I just invented hand gliding. And I've just moving. Dear America, let